This experiment details hand metal ESD as covered in the standard IEC 61000-4-2. It is available in my seminars here in Boulder City and also in my courses uh, taught at Oxford University. Hi, I'm Doug Smith. We're going to investigate today uh, hand metal ESD versus finger touch directly on the skin and there's quite a difference between them. So if we look over here at our test setup, we have a metal plate, we have the oscilloscope there, that's an Agilent DSO 5054A oscilloscope and it's a 500 megahertz and 4 giga samples. I have this uh, pointer here and I have a dime, all of which we're going to use. So let's start out with the pointer. Also you can see uh, there is a, uh, an oscilloscope probe down here in front of the scope. It's shorted by its own ground leads. All it knows, let me bring it up where you can see it, all it knows is there's a voltage between the probe tip and where the ground lead passes, which happens to be the voltage across this six inch piece of wire. Something of a uh, loop there, a loop antenna. In addition, I've got this uh, yellow wire attached to the shorted probe. Let's put this back uh, in front of the scope here. Uh, short distance uh, from the metal plate. The oscilloscope is on 1 volt per division and 10 nanoseconds and I'll show you some uh, waveforms uh, with this uh, later a uh, still shot so you'll be able to see a little clearer but you, you can see the uh, the general look of the scope screen right now. So let me uh, back off. I've got this uh, one in my hand here pointer and I'm going to just scrape my foot on the floor uh, and lift it up. I've got an infinite persistence. We'll do several discharges to see if we can get a pattern. We'll discharge the plate here to this ESD mat underneath. Scrape. We're getting 3 volts. Again, 10 nanoseconds per duration. We see 3 volts. So let's uh, ground everything again. I scrape my foot and then leave it off the floor to get the maximum charge. Here we get something a little more. That's about uh, 4 volts. Same wave shape. Something in the middle, I believe, there. Oh, it looks like the trigger uh, didn't quite work, and so it went a little bit further over. But we can see. So we're gradually building up a pattern here. And because of the way that's triggering, uh, sometimes it, it's different and displaced. But generally, uh, in the neighborhood of 3 to 4 volts, or actually 2 to 4. So we'll print that really quick here. And I'll give that to you as a uh, as a still picture at the end of the video. So keep that in mind. Let's clear the display. We're triggering at one volt. I'm going to collapse this now to a single a single segment here. It's about uh, maybe seven inches long. Here we go. Notice higher frequencies, but very similar amplitudes. Let's try it again right on top of it. Again, slightly less, but very same waveform. There we go. Pretty much uh, the same waveform each time This in this case. So let's uh, print that. I think that'll be available at the end. Reaching a peak of 3 volts into the shortest scope probe. Probably getting about a 500 volt to 1000 volt charge. It's not particularly uh, dry today in Boulder City, Nevada. Now I'm going to try a dime. A 10 cent US 10 cent piece. Great foot. Let's try that again. Got a double trigger, I think, but if you can see, it's three and a half volts, but higher frequencies yet. Try it again. We'll keep going. Generate a couple of waveforms. Sort of filling in, converging on something. Higher frequencies, but almost the same amplitude. Certainly, it's not proportional to the size of the metal. So we'll save that. Now, clear display. Let's try my fingers. Ground the plate, make sure everything is back to zero charge. Nothing. Let's bring the sensitivity down to 100 millivolts per vision and bring the trigger down to 100 millivolts. Let's bring it down to 50. If I bring it too low, you see I'm getting interference from cell phones and things. So I have 
probably need to put it up around 100 millivolts. Anything smaller we can't see because of the noise. Here we go again. Uh, scrape foot. Nothing. Ah, there we got something. About 100 millivolts. Let's see if we can... Well, let's do this. Let's clear that again. Let's bring the trigger a little bit lower. Let's bring this a little more over toward the center. Let's try it again. There we go. A couple hundred millivolts. Let's see if we can repeat that. So it looks like it's uh, two to three hundred millivolts. We'll save that now. A couple hundred millivolts instead of a couple of volts. It's a good ten to one ratio. And depending on conditions, you can get more ratio than that. So we see the, hand, the discharge from your fingers is much less uh, intense measured by the radiation into that scope probe. So why is that? Let's get back over here. So when I discharge from a piece of metal, such as this pointer here, one, it's got its own free space capacitance with very little series resistance to damp, so it dumps some charge quickly. In addition, even this small piece of metal, this dime, this contacts a fairly large area of my skin compared to just the, an individual spark coming right off my finger. And the net result is uh, there's a lower resistance into my body and I get more current in there. So the IEC 61004-2 test models this hand metal discharge. If people are poking at your products with, with fingers, it's not nearly as severe as that. Well, thank you for joining me and hope you enjoyed the experiment. This was the waveform generated by the fully extended pointer reaching a peak of uh, four volts at the top of the screen, uh, several waveforms superimposed. And here we have the collapsed pointer that was about uh, seven inches long, again reaching about three volts uh, and all the waveforms pretty much on top of each other. And here we have the dime held in the hands. Very similar waveforms. And finally, my finger discharge reaching only about uh, 300 millivolts. This video is based on a live demonstration performed during some of my seminars. These seminars deliver highly intuitive, very effective design verification and troubleshooting methods to solve engineering design, EMC, ESD, and in-the-field problems in minutes instead of days and weeks using conventional engineering methods. You can get more information at emcesd.com or www.dsmith.org.